Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we appreciate you joining um, this session on Talking with the Team, um, where my colleague Rukmini and I will tell you about HBS Online's leadership and management courses. My name is Rick Bullock. I'm Director of Product Management at HBS Online, and I'm joined by my colleague Rukmini, who I'll let introduce herself right now. Hello, everyone. My name is Rukmini Thakur, and I'm a member of the product management team here at HBS Online. Um, so at the very outset, we'd like to run you through the agenda for our discussion today. We'll start by talking a little bit about the HBS Online Learning Experience. We'll then dive a little deeper into the seven course offerings within the leadership and management topic area. We'll then try and determine uh, rather help you determine which course is right for you. Um, I'll then touch upon some important application deadlines. Uh, and lastly, we'll try and answer some of the questions that you've already submitted. If you haven't submitted questions and would like to do so, please feel free to drop them in the comment section in whichever social media channel you're joining us from. So to kick off this discussion, let's start with talking about the HBS online learning experience. Rick? Thanks so much, Rukmini. Um, so I wanted to just take a minute just to talk through kind of what we think distinguishes uh, the HBS online learning model. And there are re really three pillars of kind of what make, um, you know, what make HBS online courses kind of unique. Um, the learning model is active in the sense that um, there are lots of different opportunities through interactive exercises um, and other opportunities to engage. Um, and we have what we call the, the two to three minute rule, or sorry, the three to five minute rule, such that um, in one of our courses, you'll experience and engage with a different activity every three to five minutes. And this is all kind of purpose built and designed to help um, reinforce uh, your learning. Our courses are also social. Um, so the courses are all uh, cohort based. So you'll start a program alongside a cohort of peers from around the world, and you'll proceed uh, through the program together. There are, um, there's no kind of real-time interaction or kind of a set time during the week when you'll kind of be in class together, um, but you'll be proceeding through the content together, meeting the same weekly deadlines. And over the course of, you know, the weeks that unfold in a given course, there are lots of opportunities to learn from, learn from um, different insights and perspectives of your peers in the program. Um, this consists of kind of reflection questions and the opportunity to comment on them, to learn from different perspectives in that way, um, uh, taking advantage of what we call peer help in which you can pose a question to your peers um, and other kind of specific exercises um, in courses, like in, in our negotiation course, there are opportunities to participate in um, negotiation simulations um, with your peers. And finally, um, HBS online courses are built on the kind of same kind of pedagogy of the HBS on HBS classroom in which um, the the course concepts are taught in the context of real world business situations and um, the the faculty who have developed the course of courses have kind of reimagined kind of what the case-based learning is like online um, and so uh, you know it's really designed to help you um, understand how to apply the course concepts in the context of your own career and your um, aspirations for the development of your career. Since we frequently get questions on kind of what we mean by the case-based learning experience, I wanted to kind of share a bit about how a typical case in an HBS online course unfolds. Um, so at the beginning of a case, um, you'll typically hear a short video from what we call the protagonist, which is uh, the business leader who may be an executive or an entrepreneur describing a challenge facing their organization. Um, and then as the case unfolds, you'll learn co course concepts, share your perspective, learn from the perspectives of others through a variety of, of mechanisms. Um, you may experience what's called a cold call in which uh, you'll receive a prompt in our course platform um, to answer a question uh, via text. And so sort of as the CEO, what would you do in this situation? Um, and so you'll share your perspective and learn from the perspectives of peers. As the case unfolds, you know, you'll discover insights and deepen your understanding through a variety of different interactive learning experiences. And along the way, um, our inters interspersed our uh, short high impact videos um, from the faculty member uh, kind of helping guide the discussion, reinforcing key concepts, and really helping to synthesize kind of what are the key lessons and takeaways um, from the case. 
Now, Rukmini and I would like to just to walk through um, the course portfolio in the leadership and management topic area. Um, and so the first one we would like to highlight is um, it's called Management Essentials. And this course is really about building out your management toolkit. And um, it takes a very distinct process approach to management um, in kind of covering uh, really key processes that are important for every manager um, to understand how to undertake. Um, and so these are decision-making processes, implementation, um, learning, organizational learning, as well as organizational change. And so as you proceed through the course, you get kind of an understanding of kind of how to approach these processes um, through the lens of the protagonists who have addressed them. Um, uh, this course is really uh, either for current managers who are looking to uh, develop their managerial skill set, or maybe an individual contributor who aspires to a managerial role and wants to get a, a you know a perspective and kind of develop their skills um, as a manager. One of the highlights of this course is that the, the kind of perspective of it is that it takes this kind of treetop view um, of kind of of management. And so if you think about kind of strategy being at a very high level, kind of 30,000 feet, um, and then your day-to-day -day work being um, kind of on the ground, um, the kind of treetop perspective that this course takes helps managers kind of look at how um, the processes are unfolding in their organization and how to improve those processes um, to get the work done uh, more effectively um, for the organization. So that kind of lens um, hopefully gives you some sense of kind of the, uh, the approach of this course. Next, we're going to cover strategy execution. And this course really equips you to gain the tools, skills, and frameworks to implement strategy within your organization. Um, there are many courses on developing strategy. You know, this course is really unique in its approach to teaching how to execute on that strategy. Um, so some of the skills that you'll learn in this course are how uh, to allocate resources, measure performance, manage risk, and design high-performance jobs. This course is designed for aspiring or mid-level managers looking uh, to improve the strategy execution within their team, department, or their organization. And what's really distinct about this course is kind of the approach of teaching strategy execution, but also just the, the wide range of analytical tools that are taught in the course. Uh, the course will help you understand your organization's strengths and opportunities, how to analyze roles through uh, the job design optimization tool, and it looks at other analytical you know, approaches to looking at profit planning, incentives, um, internal risk pressures in your organization. So a wide range of, of very applicable um, uh, kind of tools to, to help you in your, your management. Next, I wanted to cover a um, course called Negotiation Mastery, uh, which teaches you how to master negotiation techniques with the goal of maximizing value for your organization. Um, this is a course that covers uh, the two key dimensions of negotiation, um, the analytical tools to kind of evaluate the situation in which you're entering into negotiation, as well as the interpersonal techniques, um, how to um, uh, you know, gauge the counterparty and how to kind of manage your own um, emotions. And as you kind of enter into a negotiation, um, both of which are, are very critical to um, negotiate effectively. This course is, you know, particularly for those who are maybe early or mid-career professionals um, looking to hone their negotiation skills, um, maybe an individual who um, hasn't had any experience in negotiation in the past, um, but this course, you know, offers an opportunity to learn kind of the conceptual foundation of, of negotiation um, and also to practice. And so I think one of the uh, key things that differentiates this course are the opportunity to um, take on four negotiation simulations um, over the course of the program in which you'll be um, partnered uh, with a peer in the program um, through a, a number of different ways. Um, so we have a, a what's called a text-based negotiation on the course platform where you'll be kind of uh, corresponding with the counterparty in the negotiation um, by typing text. Um, and there's also an opportunity to um, arrange a time with a peer in the program um, uh, to do kind of a, a real-time negotiation as well. Next, I'll turn it back to Rukmini to cover uh, the rest of the courses in the leadership and management portfolio. Great, thanks, Rick. Um, so the next course is Leadership Principles. This course is really an exploration on how to bring out the best in others to get the work done. So if you're looking to learn 
uh, to develop your leadership skill set and your leadership mindset and to really apply and adapt your leadership style so as to bring out the best in others and cultivate high performing teams. This is a course for you. Um, you will establish and learn to apply a personal leadership style with the benefit of a 360 degree feedback assessment. Um, in this assessment, you will solicit feedback from colleagues, peers, direct reports, managers, um, to really uh, reflect on your emotional intelligence and reflect on your personal leadership style. Um, this course is a six week course with two weeks dedicated for pre-work. And this pre-work is gonna basically be the time when you collate the uh, feedback from your um, colleagues and peers for the 360 degree assessment. Uh, this course is meant for new and aspiring leaders who really want to just build greater self-awareness and expand and enhance the versatility of their leadership style and approach. Um, it is developed by professors Joshua Margolis and Anthony Mayo, who are both professors at Harvard Business School. Um, in this course, you will learn not just how to lead a team, um, but also explore the personal journey of a leader. Um, and um, you will learn to shape and imprint your personal leadership style uh, through the 360 degree assessment. Um, and not just that, you will also learn through peer feedback, peer evaluation, and several other interactions during the course of the program. And this will help you really build your leadership style. Um, a point to note is that you won't just be learning from academic insights. You will step into the shoes of real business leaders. And this course has a very inspiring panel of aspiring leaders. Um, so that brings us to our next course. Um, that's organizational leadership. Uh, this course is a guide on how to lead at scale and scope to take your organization to the next level. Uh, so if you're looking to develop your skill set to set direction, um, align organizational conditions to create and deliver value, uh, foster innovation, manage change, then this is a course for you. Uh, in this course too, uh, there is a learning path tool which uh, entails a 360 degree assessment. Uh, similar to the one in leadership principles, uh, you will be soliciting feedback from your colleagues, peers, clients, um, and just people from your professional network. It's a seven-week program uh, meant for more experienced team leaders or um, people who are aspiring executives who are looking to prepare for uh, a larger scope of responsibilities or taking on larger departments or organizations. Um, this course is also developed by Professor Joshua Margolis and Anthony Mayo, uh, who are professors at Harvard Business School. Um, in this course, you will really be examining the role of a leader um, in terms of how they can act as a beacon to set and communicate direction, how they will act as an architect to align organizational conditions, and how they can act as a catalyst to foster and uh, foster innovation and change. Um, you will also learn from business stalwarts like the CEO of EasyJet, the CEO of Bank Lumi, the CEO of uh, McAfee, Levi Strauss, um, and several other inspiring leaders. Uh, just want to note here that both leadership principles and organizational leaderships are trying to address uh, different phases of the leader's journey. So leadership principles is more for new and aspiring leaders, whereas organizational leadership is more for experienced leaders. That brings us to our next course, um, Power and Influence for Positive Impact. This is really a field guide on how power really works how to gain influence and make an impact. So if you're looking to develop your power to make an impact in your organization, within your professional networks, or just society at large, this is a course for you. You will learn to diagnose your organization's political landscape, understand and prepare for different change leadership roles. This is a six week program uh, meant for early and mid career professionals. Um, the course has been developed by Professor Julie Batalana, who is a professor of business at Harvard Business School and a professor for social innovation and change at Harvard Kennedy School. Um, in this course, you will learn several skills like power mapping to understand um, the power dynamics in your organization, how to create structural safeguards to keep power in check, and really how to leverage power for good. 
Um, you will once again be stepping into the shoes of industry practitioners like Umema Menro, who's been featured here. She's a startup founder who founded Vida, uh, which is a company that uh, produces creative products on demand. Um, I want to emphasize here that this course um, talks a lot about social enterprises and the nonprofit sector. But having said that, the skills and the learnings that you'll take away from this course are very relevant across various industries. Um, so it's a great course in that sense. Um, that brings us to our next course. Uh, this is our newest course offering, Leadership Ethics and Corporate Accountability. Um, it's developed by Professor Nian Hessier who is a professor of business at Harvard Business School. He's also the lead faculty on the Leadership and Corporate Accountability course, which is a required program uh, for the first year MBA students at HBS. Um, this course is basically a toolkit for making tough uh, leadership decisions. Um, if you're looking to determine and deliver on your responsibilities to customers, employees, investors, and society by drawing on economic, legal, and ethical considerations, this is a course for you. Uh, you will learn how to navigate the gray area where responsibility, responsibilities often compete, and there is no real right answer. Um, it is meant for first-time managers, aspiring and new leaders, and entrepreneurs. And in this course, you will learn several uh, interesting frameworks, uh, like the re reflective leadership framework. Um, and in this framework, you basically learn to think through difficult and tough decision-making situations by building awareness, how to make considered judgments, and then how to act with accountability. So that brings us to the end of our course offerings. Um, now over to Rick to just help uh, navigate the different courses and help you determine which course could possibly be a good choice for you. Thanks so much, Rukmini. Um, yes, I think the leadership and management portfolio is one of our most well-developed and established portfolios of, of courses by HBS Online. And you know we're often asked by prospective participants um, kind of how to think about which is the right course for them. Um, I guess to determine the right course for you, I, I would really encourage you to um, uh, review the kind of the course pages in our website, which go into a lot of detail about um, what's covered in terms of the course syllabus, um, encourage you um, to read testimonials of our past participants who can give you a sense of, you know, the ways in which our participants have um, have taken advantage of our courses to, um, in, in, to advance learning for their careers. Um, but here we kind of just wanted to reiterate kind of how the courses kind of relate to one another and um, thought this might be a helpful way to kind of to think about them. The first three courses we covered, uh, Management Essentials, Strategy Execution, and Negotiation and Mastery, you can kind of think of as the manager's toolkit. Um, management Essentials is really grounded in, you know, those key managerial processes, decision making, organizational learning, um, change uh, change management, um, as well as implementation. Strategy execution um, um, also kind of, it kind of builds out your managerial toolkit um, with a particular focus, obviously, on executing strategy. And, um, and it sort of uh, uh, goes into a lot more depth on kind of the implementation of um, of how to take a strategy and, and deliver on it, um, uh, working within your organization and a, a number of analytical tools to help you kind of um, evaluate, you know, how to approach the process of, of executing on strategy. Negotiation is, you know, a key uh, skill for, for any manager. And there are many settings in which uh, managers need to negotiate and maybe kind of with uh, an outside vendor um, negotiation kind of inside your organization. Um, and, um, and and this course is kind of a, a, a you know, a, a covers, a, you know, a key uh, skill for, for managers to help understand kind of how to analyze the situation uh, that they're approaching for negotiation, and then the interpersonal techniques of kind of um, managing a negotiation. The next two courses that Rukmini uh, covered, Leadership Principles and Organizational Leadership, are really about the leader's journey. And as Rukmini highlighted, uh, they're targeted at the, with for those um, at different stages of their you know, leadership journey. Um, leadership principles is particularly um, appropriate for those um, 
who may be uh, individual contributors you know, transitioning into a team leadership role um, or those kind of early in their tenure um, as a team leader. And it really focuses um, uh, on kind of how to bring out the best um, in a team. And there are kind of two dimensions to that. So um, the kind of shifting, moving from individual contributor to a leader uh, requires a change in kind of the work that one would undertake, as well as their own kind of self-perception and how they see themselves as a leader. And so uh, the course focuses on kind of the work of leadership and kind of the personal journey of becoming a leader and cultivating kind of self-awareness um, and taking advantage of um, exercises like the 360 assessment that Rukmini described to kind of understand um, your your own approach to leadership, your leadership style, and kind of the impact that you have on others. Organizational leadership is aimed at those kind of farther along in their leadership journey, um, particularly for those who are experienced team leaders who may be stepping into expanded responsibilities or aspire to, in the near future, um, step into expanded responsibilities, leading a department, a division, an organization. And it, it similarly covers both the work of leadership and how that shifts as you take on more responsibilities, as well as kind of the personal journey of what it means to um, to set the tone for uh, for an organization and a wider team in which you kind of don't have as much, um, uh, at least you're leading those, you don't have kind of day-to-day -day interaction with uh, with everyone on the team. Um, so it focuses on, you know, the organizational conditions um, uh, to deliver value, foster innovation, manage change um, for those kind of at a higher level of their leadership. And finally, um, the, our two newest courses, um, Powered Influencer Positive Impact and Leadership Ethics and Corporate Accountability, um, have distinct perspectives on, um, on management and leadership. And they are perfectly appropriate for those at different stages of their um, of their journeys. They may be an individual contributor and realize that um, that an understanding of how to how to exercise power and influence um, can help you make a, a even more positive impact in your organization. Um, and so, uh, leadership ethics and corporate accountability um, uh, focuses on. Um, key leadership challenges um, and uh, and dilemmas facing leaders, um, but it's also appropriate for those who may not be in the position of being kind of the CEO of the organization. Um, but I think it it, it illustrates um, the ways in which um, uh, you know ethical, accountable decision making um, and an ability to navigate gray areas are applicable um, for those at, at a wide range of stages of, of their professional experience. And so can, you can think of these as sort of exercising impact and accountability for all, you know, wherever you are um, in your career. Now I'll turn it back to Rukmini to um, share some of the details about our upcoming courses in this topic area. Thanks, Rick. So in terms of some application deadlines that are coming up, um, for strategy execution, negotiation, mastery, power and influence for positive impact, the next application deadline is February 27, and the next cohort starts on March 8. Uh, for management essentials and organization leadership, the next application deadline is um, March 6, and the next cohort starts on March 15. Uh, for leadership principles, the next application deadline is March 27th, and the next cohort starts on April 5th. That's when the pre-work starts. Um, and for leadership ethics and corporate accountability, the next application due date is June 5th, and the next cohort starts on June 14th. Uh, having said this, I just want to emphasize that we uh, all of our courses are run about five to six times in a year. So if you happen to miss any of these deadlines, uh, don't worry, you can enroll in another uh, cohort um, and you can just check our website to see the complete list of cohorts coming up. So in terms of next steps, um, if you would like to learn more about our courses, please visit our online blog or check out our student profiles. Um, at online.hbs.edu. You can also check out our videos on YouTube or read our Facebook reviews. If you know which course you want to take and you're ready to enroll, please apply at online.hbs.edu. It's a free 10-minute application. Um, it'll only ask for some personal background information, your education and employment. Um, and then you can register upon admission. 
uh, just follow the registration link in the email that you get from our support services. Now we'll uh, try and answer some of the questions that you've already submitted. Rick, um, why don't you start with this? Thanks, Rini. Yes, um, thanks to those of you who submitted um, questions in advance. Um, and uh, and just encourage anyone who has a question um, to take advantage of the, the Q&A uh, function or as a comment in um, uh, in Facebook, LinkedIn, or YouTube, wherever you're um, watching this. Um, but first, just wanted to um, you know address some of the questions already submitted. Um, and Nadim had asked a great question about how our certificate courses are different from those offered um, by other institutions and um, or kind of in a way kind of what sets HBS online apart. What we tried to highlight kind of at the beginning of the presentation is um, what sets apart our programs in terms of the learning experience, active learning, social learning, uh, learning course concepts in the context of real world cases, um, hearing from business leaders um, as you kind of proceed um, uh, through a course. Also just wanted to um, highlight kind of some of the benefits of our courses after the course. Um, and, and so um, upon com completing a course, you'll be invited to a global professional network um, in which you can connect with um, those who have uh, similarly um, completed an HBS online course um, in a number of different ways. Um, we have an annual conference called Connext in which uh, offers an opportunity um, uh, either to come to campus or to participate um, virtually in um, a series of programming featuring uh, faculty and opportunities to um, engage with, um, with fellow past participants. And we also have HBS Online Community, which um, is a way, an avenue through which you can connect um, with peers after the program. Um, you know, HBS Online is, is you know, built on social learning and um, learning from others, contributing to the learning of others. And um, we hope uh, HBS Online Community is, uh, for you as past participants, is an opportunity to, to continue um, learning and connecting with, um, with fellow learners. Also just wanted to note that um, we do offer a discount for repeat participants. Um, and so um, once you have successfully completed one of our first courses, um, you'll receive a 30% discount on uh, future courses. And if you do choose to enroll in a future course, um, there's an opportunity to earn what's called a certificate of specialization. So upon completing a single course, you will receive uh, a certificate um, and guidance how to, on how to um, you know, represent uh, your learning on, on LinkedIn and elsewhere. If you enroll in three courses in a learning track, um, uh, leadership of management being one example of, of one of our learning tracks, um, if you complete those courses within 18 months, um, then you can earn um, a certificate of specialization. And here you can see one of our past participants uh, with her certificate of specialization. Now I'll turn it over to Rukmini to address another pre-submitted question. Thanks, Rick. Um, so we had a good question from Burke. Uh, basically, he's asking, what is the recognition of the certificates in general and worldwide? Um, so we have conducted a few surveys with our past participants, um, and we're happy to say that almost 50% said that they attracted more attention from recruiters. 53% said they received more responsibility at work. In another recent survey that we conducted, almost 42% said that they reported an increase in salary, um, and the average salary increase was about 17,000 US dollars. Um, 91% said HBS online was better than other online business programs. So um, if, if we were to go by indicators, it seems like employers are um, recognizing these certificates. Um, the next question we had was uh, from Rochelle, and she asks if there is anything that one needs to prepare for the class. Um, in terms of specific preparation for the classes, there isn't anything you need to do. Um, but um, I'd just like to point out that for the leadership principles um, course, you have a two week pre-work period in which you will be collating the assessments from uh, your feedbacks that you've uh, received from your peers. 
Um, we also received a question from Diane who asks if there is any way to do these courses in a group. There indeed is. Um, it is the, we have a team called the Strategic Alliances team, which basically works with organizations that want to enroll their employees um, in a group. You can head on over to our website and click on the four organizations tab, and that will take you to the Strategic Alliances um, link and, you know, you can take it forward from there. Uh, Rick, over to you. Excuse me. Um, thank you, Rukmini. Um, so thanks again for um, those of you who have submitted questions and uh, for those who continue to do so through the um, either the Q&A feature um, or kind of on the social media platform where you're watching this. Um, uh, Michael on uh, Zoom had a question about um, how engagement with peers um, works in the course platform. Um, and that's a great question. So um, all of our courses are asynchronous. And so they are self-paced courses, but they have a weekly deadline. And so you will start um, a course at the same time as a cohort of peers from around the world, um, but there's not kind of a set time to log in um, and nor is there kind of a set time in which you'll kind of engage with peers. But there, even in an, the asynchronous course platform, there are a number of ways um, in which you will kind of engage with um, with your peers. Um, so a common kind of activity in one of our courses uh, would be a reflection. And so um, you'll be posed a question, you'll share your response, and then you'll have an opportunity to uh, review the responses of others, comment on them, star them, like them. Um, and so that's an opportunity to um, learn from different perspectives. On each page of our course platform, we have a tool called Peer Help, in which you can pose a question to your peers. And then as others kind of proceed through the course, um, they can um, they can address it. Um, there are um, other opportunities for team discussions in a number of our courses in which you'll um, kind of uh, share kind of um, written responses, uh, you know, alongside uh, a smaller group of peers um, to kind of wrestle uh, with a particular question. Um, in the case of negotiation mastery, as I mentioned, there are four negotiation simulations in which you'll, um, you know, negotiate with a peer in the cores. Um, and those um, are set up in a number of different ways. Um, so in one in one example, um, it's called a text-based negotiation. And so um, you'll be kind of paired with someone and you'll negotiate via, you know, it'll, it looks like kind of a text message kind of back and forth. Um, in another situation, you'll be paired with someone and then you'll set up a time offline to connect with them uh, to have kind of a, uh, a real-time um, negotiation uh, with them. Um, so I hope, Michael, that addresses your question about um, uh, peer interaction on the course platform. And then, uh, Rukmini, do you want to? Um... Yes, uh, we have a question here asking, how many specialists work in the course? Are they all live classes? So the specialists uh, in the course would be basically the protagonists and the industry practitioners that varies from course to course. We also have uh, various faculty members, um, the, of course, the lead faculty that has designed the course who will take you through the entire course, but also other faculty members. But this varies from course to course. Uh, in terms of whether the course, um, whether, whether the classes are live, they're not live, they're self-paced. Um, but you will be working, like Rick said, with your uh, cohort and your peers um, to meet weekly and you know preset deadlines. So the classes are not live. I did see a question um, uh, from Clara, apologies if I'm mispronouncing your name, um, about our leadership principles course and particularly about um, the pre-work and the 360 assessment um, that Rukmini described. And just kind of maybe step back just to kind of 
reiterate kind of what the process is for this. Um, so the course starts on a set date. And for the first two weeks, um, uh, there really isn't course content. There's very limited course content because what we'd like to do is to give participants in the program um, a chance to solicit feedback for the 360 assessment. And so the reason that we provide the two weeks is just to give plenty of time uh, for you to um, identify peers and colleagues um, who will uh, kind of submit a survey kind of related to the 360 assessment and for kind of all of that um, information to get back so that you can have a report, you know, on the, based on um, the 360 and then apply kind of your reading of that report to your um, to your learning in the uh, the first module of the course. Um, so the pre-work does not precede the start of the course. It's it's sort of a block of two weeks um, before the course content really starts. And the intention there is to to give time so that um, everyone can take advantage of the the learning from the 360 um, uh, and um, apply that um, uh, when you kind of start the kind of course content um, directly uh, after that two week pre work period. Um, so hope that addresses your question. There's a question um, on Zoom uh, asking specifically about the Management Essentials course and whether it would be a good fit for someone with an MBA. Um, and that's a great question. I think we have found is that um, I, it, the, the course content in, in, in that course is, um, is based on a course that is offered um, in the MBA, in the HBS MBA program. Um, it may reiterate concepts that are taught um, in an MBA program we may have enrolled in in the past. Um, but in that course and in other courses, we do have some the, some of individuals who have already earned an MBA who enroll in one of our courses um, uh, for with the intention of kind of refreshing their understanding or seeking out a different perspective. You know, the perspective that's offered on kind of managerial processes in the case of, of that course specifically um, may be different from, from what you learned um, in an MBA. I think that course is distinct in its approach to teaching management essentials, um, whereas other courses in our, um, our portfolio, um, uh, thinking of like financial accounting, for example, you know, if you have, you know, a, a deep background in financial accounting and interpreting financial statements from an MBA program or, or elsewhere, then enrolling in that course uh, would be valuable may, maybe as a refresher, but um, wouldn't necessarily cover, you know, new ground. Um, whereas a course like Management Essentials um, has a dis distinct perspective in um, how management is taught. And so uh, it may cover concepts similar to what you have encountered in your past education, but uh, maybe offer a different perspective. And so um, there may be value uh, for you, even if you've um, already uh, earned an MBA. Okay, we have one question that's uh, requesting me to go through the stats again of the outcomes survey. Uh, we will add the link um, in the chat as well. Um, but just to reiterate, um, here's the slide. Um, through our survey, we found that 50% of our uh, past participants said that they were getting more attention from recruiters. 53% received more responsibility at work. Um, we also did another survey in which about 42% said that they saw an increase in their salaries um, and the average salary rise was about 17,000 US dollars. 91% um, said HBS online was better than other online um, business programs. And there are several other uh, st statistics on the slide that might help you um, decide and take the last step. Um, there's also a question on what happens if you can't meet the deadlines. Um, uh, it is essential that you meet the weekly deadlines uh, to get the certificate programs. However, if there is some crisis or some really um, 
extenuating circumstance. Um, I think you can speak with program services, um, but but on a on a general basis, it is it is a prerequisite to complete the coursework on time uh, in order to get the certificate. Thanks, Rukmini. And um, you know, if you can you can miss one deadline per course and and still complete um, a program, but um, you know, I, I think the the intention in kind of the design of our programs is uh, in kind of the this kind of strict enforcement of, of the deadlines is that you you proceed through the program alongside your peers and you learn from your peers. You contribute to the learning of your peers through um, some of the channels um, that we've highlighted through the course platform um, and. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, our participants have generally found it very motivating to kind of continue uh, through the program, and it's one of the big reasons why you know we have very very high um, completion rates, and participants have reported um, really positive outcomes um, uh, from uh, from our courses. Just going to take a look to see if there are other questions. It looks like there are a couple of questions about um, from individuals um, who don't have prior experience in business or management and whether um, whether one of our courses might be right for them or which is the right course for them. It's it's very hard to say which is the right course for you um, without knowing a lot about your, um, you know, individual circumstances. But um, I think it's 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 one way to kind of I, let's just we could just sort of step back for a moment and, and talk about kind of the profile of our you know participants um who have found value in our programs um and I think as uh my colleague Catherine noted um in the chat you know learners from from all walks of life had found have found value in the programs um I think if you're looking for um really the language of business and a, the set of really foundational kind of business skills um if you have no prior exposure um, uh, to business, um, you know our business essentials topic area, um, which includes business analytics, financial accounting, and economics for managers. They're also offered as a bundle in the credential readiness or core program. Um, that's kind of designed for those who are kind of in that situation where they're looking for a holistic kind of perspective on kind of the language of business um, and that those topic areas uh, and the kind of concepts taught in those three courses really align to um, uh, kind of the foundations that they'd like to to get um, in business. But having said that, the core program is not a prerequisite in any way for any of our programs. And uh, very few of our of our programs um, have sort of a, a prerequisite or kind of expectation of previous knowledge. Um, a couple of our courses in the financial accounting topic area, um, there's uh, a strong recommendation that participants have uh, some background in some of the kind of uh, concepts um, in finance. But in the leadership and management topic area, um, there's not an expectation of, um, of previous knowledge uh, coming into the courses. Um, I think on each of the course pages um, of the courses, uh, we feature kind of a, a little descriptive language on kind of who would benefit and sort of the um, the kind of types of uh, of individuals who um, uh, may find the most the most value from our courses. Um, so I would encourage you to take a look at that. Um, take a look at the student stories that are that are featured on our um, on our website to help give you a sense of um, what might be the right course for you. Um, we also have a lot of details on the the syllabi, the the, the course content that's covered um, through kind of some video snippets, um, some text, and a, a kind of a PDF of um, uh, of the syllabus to kind of give you a sense of what concepts are covered. And hopefully, um, that set of information would help kind of inform um, which is the right course for you. I think with respect to kind of becoming a, a new leader, um, you know, leadership principles is very well aligned for kind of a set of kind of leadership skills for those who are going from individual contributor to kind of a new leader role. Um, 
Management Essentials has a different perspective, offers a different set of skills, but is likewise um, uh, very well aligned for those who are kind of relatively new in their um, managerial experience or as a refresher for those who may have more managerial experience. Um, so I have to, hope that is helpful uh, for those of you who are kind of still trying to kind of figure out which is the right um, fit for you. There is one question here which asks about the degree of difficulty between uh, the courses. Um, and I think uh, Rick, please jump in um, if I'm if I'm um, going off course. But um, most of the courses run for about um, um, you know you'll have to put in about six to seven hours of work per week, um, and ultimately it will depend um, on your what you want to take away from the course and your your uh, time that you put in to determine what the difficulty level would be. Um, but most of them are about six weeks, uh, six to seven weeks. You would put in about six to seven hours a week. Um, and, and they're pretty similar in that sense. Uh, there's another question um, that came through the Q&A um, related to um, final exam. And, um, you know, there are uh, none of, so our credential readiness program uh, that I just described does have a final exam. Um, our, the courses that we've described today on leadership and management um, do not have kind of an assessment like that. Um, you're assessed based on your successful com like successfully completing kind of the deadlines associated with the the modules for the courses, um, as well as your your, your contributions in various um, ways to the learning of others um, uh, through your kind of engagement on the course platform. Um, but there's uh, there's not a no final exam. There's um, I see one question on Q and A. Is there group based learning including um, completing projects? Um, there in. No, it's. I would encourage you to um, to take a look at um, the course pages for each of our courses, um, which go into detail on um, what are the featured kind of exercises in each of the modules, um, as well as kind of what are the um, opportunities for kind of group discussion, other other work like that. Um, there's not, um, they're not kind of group projects per se, but there are, are opportunities in our courses um, to kind of, uh, you know, apply your learning. Um, so uh, there's a, a project week in our organizational leadership for a uh, course, for example, um, but it's a, it's an individual project. Um, uh, but I guess, uh, I think if, if you kind of take a look at the the syllabi for, for each of our courses, you can see kind of, um, what the exercises are, what the expectations are, as far as um, the work associated with those courses. Um, uh, so I, I hope that's uh, helpful for that question. And then we are coming up on time, but uh, just wanted to address uh, one last question um, about other certificate programs, if interested in courses from multiple learning streams. Um, and um, so the, our current offerings include, as I mentioned, uh, the opportunity to, to complete a certificate of specialization. And these are um, in a, one of our learning tracks or topic areas. And they're really designed um, to have kind of a deeper, uh, deeper knowledge and understanding of those topics. Um, the program that we have that is really designed around uh, learning from multiple dimensions uh, of business is the Credential of Readiness program. And it's a it's a bundled three course program consisting of business analytics, financial accounting, and economics for managers. And the courses really complement each other um, coming from different areas of business to kind of teach you the language of business. So that might be um, a good fit for you. Um, there's a question here regarding the fees. Um, in terms of like 
payment options, um, you, you could visit our website. There are several different payment options. One that I just want to note here is um, while you can't pay uh, in installments, there is the facility to split your payment. Uh, if you'd like to split it between two people, that is, it's possible to do that. Um, and uh, there is more information on our website in the FAQs um, and a lot more details on uh, payment options and scholarships uh, for different courses, which you can have a look at. Thank you so much, Rukmini. And um, as we sign off, just wanted to thank you all so much for your interest in HPS Online and our leadership and management courses. Um, uh, we've highlighted a number of different avenues through which you can get more information um, about our courses in this topic area or um, across the portfolio. Um, appreciate your, your thoughtful questions um, submitted through various channels and, and your time today. And um, uh, for those of, you know, for you and for anyone else who had registered for the webinar, um, we'll be circulating um, a recording of this uh, for, for future reference. Um, but just want to say uh, thank you and hope you all have a great day.